I was I was recording this and just now my teacher just gave me of an assignment. Man, fuck! First of all, get all of your clips ready, of course. Here we will be using three clips: tunnel clip, pre-tunnel, and post-tunnel, or clip before tunnel and clip after tunnel. Twixter the pre-clip and post-clip, however you like. Don't mind the trash as Twixter because I was in a hurry while recording it, and uh, you know that's not the focus of our video. Find a good looking frame on your tunnel layer and then right click, go to time and freeze frame. This will do something very very unexpected, it will uh, freeze the frame. I'm gonna adjust the length of the clips a little bit because uh, you know if you make it too long it'll look awkward. Mask the frame that you wanna make transition on. I'm using a mouth clip so in this transition we are going to go inside his mouth. Pause. If you use a mouth clip too, then try not to mask out the teeth or else it'll look uh, goofy. After masking, press M and then check the invert option. After that, click on this arrow and make the feather like 3 or 5. I'll cut the axis of this clip. Now select the tunnel layer and post tunnel layer and pre-compose them. Go inside the composition and make the composition like 1 ratio 1. In usual cases, your composition will be like 1920 by 1080 on default. So make the both numbers same. Just don't make it lower, like don't go 720 by 720 because that will, you know, get you lower resolution and ruin the quality. And actually, don't even go 1080 by 1080, go even higher. You can go 1920 by 1920. In my case, I'll go 2100 by 2100 just to be safe. Now we are going to readjust our anchor point and put it in the center of our mask area. To make our transition look cleaner for example this is the mast area and this is its center so i need to put my anchor point here get these roller type things and put them on center if you can't see these layers press ctrl r and they will appear and if you don't know where the center is just click on any clip and you will see this circle thing just put it there press s for scale and shift a for anchor and scale to open at the same time and adjust the anchor and put it in center and scale it to fill the frame. Now for the interesting part. Add a camera and two nuts above it. Now you're gonna duplicate your clip and increase the Z position and Z rotation of every clip. Simultaneously? Why would I spell it like that? For example, this clip has zero Z position and zero Z rotation. I'm gonna duplicate this layer and add 3000 in Z position and 30 in Z rotation. Then I'm gonna duplicate and add 3000 more in Z position and 30 more in Z rotation and so on. I'll do this 5 to 6 times and this is how the value of your clips should look like. After that, link the camera to null and enable the 3D. Then press P for position and make a keyframe at the beginning. Then make another at the end and increase the Z position to a lot. Hold shift to make it faster. Easy ease and separate dimensions if you're gonna make the graph one by one. Open rotation and make the rotation in the same direction our clips are going. For example, in this case, my clips are going clockwise. So I will make the transition clockwise as well. Select all your keyframes and make transition something like this. This is too slow for me so I'll just adjust it a bit. Link the null to other null. Open rotation and position and adjust the layer to your liking. I'm, gonna go, I'm just gonna go in the middle and rotate it till it looks I'm just gonna go in the middle and rotate it till it's look like I'm just gonna go in the middle and rotate it till it looks right. That took five hours to say. Add one adjustment layer on top and make it like four to five frames. Add one at the start and then add another at the end of our tunnel layer. Add CC radial blur and make the type to centered zoom. Increase it to 75. Add a keyframe in the starting and add another at the end and make it zero. Do the same thing on the other layer but make the first frame 0 and second frame 75.
go to camera and adjust your Z frame a bit to make your clip look a bit more zoomed in. Don't even worry about the gaps around the clip, it'll work out later. Add another layer and keep it below our blur layer. Add a shake there. You can make your own shake or just copy the shake. Add another adjustment layer and add the same blur effect except remove all the keyframes and make it very very less like 5 or 8. And this is how your clip should look now. Now it's time to set up the post tunnel clip. Move the clip below the camera, extend it and let it overlap our tunnel layer. Enable 3D and adjust it to appear on the frame. What I am doing here is just more efficient way to work with 3D camera. I am not gonna explain it because it's a big topic and deserves a video of its own. Let me know if you all want a video in 3D camera. After that, go to the first layer and make some rotations and Z positions like this to make it look smooth, fluent, persuasive, whatever the synonym. Now make a fade in transition. Get another adjustment layer and add optics compensation. Increase the FOV and check reverse lens distortion. Add another layer and add as vignette, vignette, however you say it. To people that are still watching, I have a gift for y'all. The project file of the edit on the starting that you saw, it's uploaded on my Discord server. You can go there and download it and you can then learn by yourself and learn even better, right? And I appreciate all of you for watching my videos to the end. This is how our clip should look now. I'm just gonna make some adjustment on the first clip, the pre-tunnel layer. And for that, I will just zoom in a bit. And then add adjustment layer and add a shake. And this is the base of the effect. Imagine you're watching my video and you like my video by heart but didn't hit the like button. And the next second, you see me smashing into your room and start to beat your ass. Well, of course, that's not gonna happen because your home is very safe. Or is it? I'm inside your home.